Plantar fasciitis is one of the most common reasons patients go to orthopedic surgeons and one of the most common foot complaints that patients have when they visit their primary doctors. But plantar fasciitis is also very frustrating. Patients suffer with plantar fasciitis for months, if not years. In this video, we'll examine how best to approach the treatment of plantar fasciitis. Plantar fasciitis is a common disease of the feet that affects people of all ages and from all walks of life. Yet, as common as plantar fasciitis is, it is also one of the most frustrating diseases that patients experience. It is a frustrating condition because quite often it's difficult to find a single treatment that affords relief. And thereafter, often, the disease recurs after successful treatment. On top of that, plantar fasciitis can be a significant cause of morbidity and can lead to loss of countless hours from work, not to mention a decrease in the quality of life of patients with this condition. But why is plantar fasciitis such a frustrating disease? Why do patients have to go through a laundry list of treatments to find one that really works for them. Although plantar fasciitis is a self-limiting disease, there are many reasons why it can also frustrate its sufferers. The plantar fascia is a thick fibrous sheet that runs from the calcaneus or heel bone to the toes in the sole of the feet. And it plays an important role in maintaining the arch of the foot as well as ensuring the proper functioning of the feet as we ambulate. Now, it is believed that plantar fasciitis is the result of excessive stress and tension and strain in the plantar fascia that leads to micro tears that then cause degeneration in the plantar fascia, and this causes the pain and symptoms of plantar fasciitis. Curious enough, there is no actual inflammation in the plantar fascia. Rather, there may be some inflammation in the surrounding tissues early in the disease. As a result of this, many practitioners now refer to plantar fasciitis as plantar fasciosis or fasciopathy. But what is it that causes the actual tension and stress in the plantar fascia in the first place? Well, being overweight can place excessive strain on the plantar fascia, and multiple studies have shown an association between a body mass index greater than 27 and the incidence of plantar fasciitis. Patients may have a decreased range of motion of the ankle, known as equinus. Patients with equinus have difficulty bending their ankle towards the shin bone or anatomical uh, uh, abnormalities such as flat foot or, or pes planus or pes cavus or an excessive exaggerated arch can also place strain on the plantar fascia and lead to plantar fasciitis. Abnormalities of gait that may occur in patients with weakness of the abductor muscles of the uh, pelvis, the muscles that lift the legs to the side of the body, or anatomical deformities in the knee, such as uh, the valgus deformity that can cause abnormalities of the gait, can place abnormal stress in the plantar fascia and cause plantar fasciitis, as can uh, shortening of the Achilles tendon, or of the calf muscles. Outside of the body, possible causes are running on hard surfaces, or using worn out shoes, or a sedentary lifestyle, or a sudden increase in an exercise regimen, or standing for long periods of time at work. People with plantar fasciitis 
complain of pain in the inner surface of the heel, in the sole of the foot. And this pain generally presents uh, early in the morning on stepping out of bed onto the floor and may dissipate as the day progresses. Sometimes plantar fasciitis pain can present after a period of rest. Athletes experience plantar fasciitis pain after a particularly intense exercise session. But because of these many causes of plantar fasciitis, patients are often prescribed treatments that do not address the underlying cause of their condition. A patient with pelvic muscle weakness, for instance, and an abnormal gait may be prescribed inner soles and sent on their merry way. Although they may experience some relief with the inner soles, down the road, it is almost inevitable that they will develop new symptoms, whether it is a flat foot or a short uh, gastronomicus muscle in the calf that is causing the, the plantar fasciitis. If these conditions are not addressed, then any relief that is gained will be temporary in nature. The fundamental treatment of plantar fasciitis is the decrease in the tension and stress in the plantar fascia itself. How do we know that? We know that because difficult to treat cases of plantar fasciitis, so-called recalcitrant plantar fasciitis, 90% of those are relieved with surgical procedures. Surgical intervention that involves decreasing the tension in the plantar fascia by performing an incision cutting through the fascia partially to decrease the stress in the plantar fascia itself. Or surgical procedures that involve the cutting of the muscle sheet in the calf muscles known as the gastronomicus and the soleus thereby allowing them to elongate and to lengthen and to decrease the tension in the plantar fascia itself. But a surgical intervention is a last resort, and patients can experience greater degrees of success if they are educated on how to decrease the tension in their plantar fascia through doing exercises strengthening exercises, and stretching exercises. The most important intervention, however, involves the identification of the underlying cause of the plantar fasciitis and treating those. Thank you for watching. I hope this video acts as a guide in helping you to treat your plantar fasciitis effectively. If you found it useful, share it with your friends and family hit the like button and leave your comments in the section below. You can support this channel by subscribing. Until the next video, stay healthy and stay safe.